Hello everyone, I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, Leveraging Socius Cloud to Grow Your Organization. I'd like to introduce today's presenter. We have Bert Burry, he's our Manager of Cloud Services, as well as Daryl Mall. Thank you very much, Cheryl, and thank you everyone for taking time out of your day to view this webinar and presentation on Socius Cloud Services and leveraging Socius Cloud for your organization. As Cheryl said, I will be co-presenting today with Daryl Mall, our Socius Cloud Architect, who provisions the uh, cloud services environment. The brief agenda today will be to going over a quick introduction of Socius Cloud, specifically what the cloud does, cloud value, cloud deployment, cloud partner resource opportunities, and a brief conclusion about the cloud services program that we have here at Socius. Socius is an organization that means uh, Latin for ally. We have 100 plus associates nationwide. We specialize in providing ERP, CRM, business intelligence, and collaboration solutions from Microsoft Dynamics, Sage, as well as technology based on Microsoft Office, SharePoint Server. We're headquartered in Dublin, Ohio, and we proudly serve clients across the United States from a number of locations. We have more than 1,800 implementations of ERP and CRM software applications and our business relationships are the best indicator of our experience and demonstrated excellence. You can see that we have multiple organizations from a wide variety of uh, business practices including manufacturing, distribution, professional services, not-for-profit, and for public organizations. As we get into the webinar today and a little bit of a deeper dive into cloud services, one of the first things that comes to many people's mind is what do you expect from the cloud? As these little cartoons across the screen indicate, the idea of cloud has really transformed of late into really uh, a quick idea of what it was to a real uh, live expectation of what cloud is supposed to do for organizations and help them grow in stability and scalability. When we look at cloud expectation and look at opportunities for cloud to serve business organizations, we see that there's a lot of different opportunities here for what the cloud really does for an organization. It increases scalability by allowing an organization to grow over a period of time. It allows the organization to add additional users as the organization grows in real time. You don't have to wait to purchase additional hardware or equipment. You can scale up with your users at any time. In that capacity, it also increases flexibility, allows the business to adjust, the cloud adjusts for the business in any current uh, instance or given environment. The cloud also provides increased cost savings. It allows you to actually save the cost of upgrading or replacing outdated servers and server environments, such as supporting uh, cooling equipment, secure access, power panels, and redundant systems. It also provides uh, increased access and mobility. With the cloud, users can access their environment anywhere they have a reliable internet connection. No longer are they tied to a workstation or to a desk in the office environment. They can actually access the cloud environment from a coffee shop, a hotel, or anywhere they have a reliable internet connection. True productivity is made possible through the cloud. Also with the cloud, it simplifies licensing and complexity. With software as a service in our Socius Cloud model, we actually go ahead and maintain the license and annual maintenance for you and that software as a service. It also reduces overhead by the reduction and elimination of additional server costs and the uh, expenditures that are associated with that. It also reduces data loss with information backed up and replicated in more than one instance in the cloud environment, your data is always safe and secure and you can always access it, again, anywhere you have a reliable internet connection. Also, cloud brings reduces downtime, so that basically what happens is when you have a cloud environment that is accessible, anywhere you have a reliable internet connection, you, workers and users can authenticate from a reliable location that has internet and actually get more done and be able to log into the environment and do uh, work within the ERP. No longer do they have to stay to a specific location in a corporate office. 
As we get into a deeper dive about cloud environment and actually understanding cloud, we really need to understand where the data goes. It's not a magical location where the data just goes out into the atmosphere. In reality, the data is stored on hardware and servers, much like someone might have on-premise. The difference is, is that it's actually stored in a secure data center. Perhaps one of the best ways to understand what a data center is, is to consider an analogy. On the slide in front of you, we talk about a safe deposit box analogy. Basically, in years gone by and still today to a degree, many people store valuables in a bank safe deposit box. They have access to the bank, they go to the bank, they provide a key, and they actually can go in with a shared teller key and access the contents within their uh, safe deposit box within a bank vault. Storing of the data is very similar to that. Storing the data in the cloud is identical to storing valuables in a bank safe deposit box. The data center is very similar to a bank. Both are off-site, both are secure, both have levels of security and authentication that actually allow you and only you to be able to have access to your data. It's also an instance of a shared environment. When one considers the safe deposit box analogy, you understand, of course, that the bank is not just your bank. That is to say that you actually share that bank with uh, other individuals. However, you're not expected to share the contents of your safe deposit box with others. The same thing is true in a data center. A large data center actually stores data for multiple organizations and people in one central location, much like a bank would. However, you and only you have access to your data, and that data is not shared or uh, transmitted to any others that are in the data center. So that takes us to the next slide where we really like to talk about what is the data center. At this point, I'm going to turn a portion of the presentation over to Daryl Mall, our cloud services architect, to talk in a little bit detail about our services and in particular, what is a data center. Daryl? Thanks, Bert. So one of the big differences between uh, your on-premise services and the services that are provided by the cloud is the fact that your the hardware that your services are provided from in a cloud solution are located in a world-class data center. You can see from the schematic on the uh, slide here that uh, you know just some of the components that make up a uh, you know world-class data center. Well, in addition to having you know over 24,000 square feet of uh, you know raised floor space in uh, in our solution, we also have 420 tons of cooling of air conditioning, multiple redundant electric, electrical connections, an FM200 system, one, two 1 1.5 megawatt generators, jet diesel generators, and the uh, facility is staffed 24-7, 365. What this does is increases the security and reliability of the data that you have in Um, you cannot access the uh, location without photo ID, and in the meantime, you have a photo ID and biometric layer security to get into the data center. In addition to um, the, the redundant, there's redundant internet connections, and there's and then there's backups of the power and um, cooling connections. So that at many different levels, in addition to what you typically have in your on-premise solution, you also have the redundancies and higher availability options of a data center that make it more reliable. One of the largest values over um, any other cloud service provider that um, the Socius Cloud offers is the multiple years of experience that we have in providing and setting up and dealing with ERP solutions, namely in the cloud also. Um, there are some uh, nuances that go with doing an ERP application in, an, in, a, in a cloud and in a remote uh, scenario go along with um, being able to reliably access that information from anywhere that there is a reliable internet connection. One of the largest things that we do is bring that knowledge and that expertise in delivering that solution so that it works everywhere all the time. We include the monthly maintenance that is needed to keep that uh, installation up to date as far as security patches and, and functionality patches, Windows updates, 
uh, service tax, and all of that. The safety and security of making sure that the solution is monitored for um, unauthorized access to be able to, to be able to prevent unauthorized access and make sure that everything is kept up to date as far as security and updates. One of the uh, uh, other that we have that really goes on well to the uh, ERP solution is our Associates Analytics, which is a business intelligence uh, solution that we have developed and packaged to go against Dynamics GP and AD AX. And it provides out-of-the-box solutions for uh, you know, graphing and, and bringing dashboards and real-world information out of the data that you do have housed in our Socius Cloud, all at a predictable cost model. Because as we'll get to later, whether you're, you're doing an infrastructure as a service model or a software as a service model, either one of those, um, you, know, you have a cost per user. It is per named user, but you do have a cost per named user for that. And uh, you can reliably budget on what the what your cost is, depending on how many users that you do have for the system. To set up, one of the things that we do is take some of the complexity out of Microsoft licensing. So, in addition to um, you know handling, if you have a software as a service, um, in addition to handling the uh, ERP application licensing. We also handle taking care of the licensing for the servers that are needed for the solution, any of the application servers, such as your SQL, license, SQL licensing, any RDP licensing for you to get you into the, uh, to the environment, and configuration and setup of the uh, SQL instance and the ERP application to make sure that it's set up properly and uh, you know, works efficiently and effectively. Printing will be sorry. Printing will not be an issue, as we take care of all, setting up all the print drivers and everything for your uh, for your application right there. As I mentioned before, we manage all the Windows updates for the operating systems for all of the servers involved in your uh, solution. Take care of the Microsoft Service Pack for the operating system and the SQL uh, server updates. Install any cumulative updates for any of the Dynamics ERP software. And your solution is monitored 24-7, 365 uh, by our level platforms monitoring solution. Backups are taken uh, up to and including possibly you know, uh, 15 minutes uh, transaction level backups of your SQL data, nightly backups of your uh, virtual server environment. And all of those backups are in three different locations in our primary data center and then also replicated to an off-site location. Included with your monthly maintenance fee or your monthly user fees are the troubleshooting of any network connectivity issues, monitoring of all the server logs and firewall logs, and uh, any user setup and uh, delete add user add and deletion of users. So a lot of people have a question between, you know, what is, they hear the term cloud, and then to further um, distinguish, they, they hear uh, the terminology called public cloud and a private cloud and want to know what the difference between a public cloud and a private cloud is. The difference between a public and a private cloud are public clouds are applications that are readily available um, on the Internet, but that get updates that don't necessarily uh, the user doesn't get to choose when they're updated and what updates are applied. So applications like CRM Online, Office 365, Facebook, Salesforce, NetSuite, all of those applications, the users are you know have the same uh, cloud accessibility. But when an update comes out, they get that update and they are told when that update is going to be applied. And then there's a period of system of unavailability while that update is being applied. And then the, the system comes back online, and, and it's at the new patch level. The infrastructure is owned by the provider of that uh, application and is made generally available to the public through uh, the Internet. And it you know, services multiple tenants. 
Another big difference between the public cloud and the private cloud is typically in a public cloud solution, the amount of customization is limited down to almost nothing in some instances um, between what your uh, instance of that application looks like and what another company's instance looks like. Um, because of the fact that there's the standardization and the ability for them to com have complete control over versioning, uh, you know, that can public cloud solutions tend to be a little bit cheaper than private cloud solutions because there's less overhead. With a private cloud solution, they may be owned, you know, the, the hardware is typically owned again by, you know, a third party, but that's not necessarily true. You can have um, cloud solutions, private cloud solutions that are customer owned. Um, and access to the individual clouds is limited to just that organization and that organization only into their little piece of the cloud. And because it is their own little piece of the cloud, they control versioning, when updates are applied, what updates are applied, and that gets taken care of. In Associates Cloud Solution, private cloud solution, we will handle all of the updates for you. As we mentioned before, the Windows updates, the SQL updates, and the GP cumulative service packs, or the cumulative updates. But the difference between um, other solutions and ours, as far as the public cloud solution goes, we will coordinate with you to come up with a date and time of when it is uh, you know, an appropriate or good time for you and if you want the, in the case of GP, if you want those updates applied and what level you want to be on. So infrastructure as a service and software as a service are two different components of our software, of our Socius Cloud. Um, the major difference between the two our um, infrastructure as a service is doing just that. It's providing you with the server infrastructure to uh, run the solution. It's giving you virtual servers that uh, can run the people can log into and rerun the application. The SQL backend. In addition to that, it's giving you a secure firewall connection with a redundant internet connection and backups that are in different locations and uh, you know offsite. The difference between infrastructure as a service and software as a service it is the software as a service option includes everything in the infrastructure as a service option in addition to also providing the ERP licensing on top of the infrastructure licensing. So that's the major difference between software as a service and infrastructure as a service. Included in the infrastructure as a service, you have your virtual terminal server that is dedicated to you know, each client a SQL Server instance that is dedicated to each client, the operating system licensing, the SQL licensing, the remote desktop licensing, antivirus, backup licensing, the monitoring of the, each uh, instance, and the Microsoft Office licensing for um, use in the cloud. And that is $165 per named user. And then you can see there from the next slide, the major difference in between the two is the highlighted first item there, and that is the dynamic software licensing, whether it be GP, NEB, AX, or SL, and that is $230 per named user. Uh, all licensing in the cloud is done per named user, not per concurrent user like uh, is on premise, where you may have 50 users that need to get into the application at one point in time, but you only have a five concurrent user model. Um, that is not an option in a cloud solution. Licensing is done per named user, so if you have 50 users that will need to get into the application, you will have to uh, do purchase that many um, user licenses. Thank you, Daryl. Um, one of the reasons we also feel that Socius Cloud Services and Socius as an organization is an ideal partner for you is because we also provide some services known as business analytics. We're the cloud partner that can provide powerful business analytics in our cloud. Business intelligence is actually much more than just reporting. It allows you to obtain a mindset of a learning organization. It allows you to look uh, forward rather than always looking in the rearview mirror about your organization. Powerful queries and powerful visual graphics and charts actually help you understand and interpret your data in a more meaningful way. It allows you to actually look at actionable 
data, which becomes proactive versus reactive in terms of a thought process. It's also rich in rapid self-service, which allows you to implement and look at your existing data and implement new changes or make adjustments to your organization as time moves on to better optimize your service offerings to your customers. Again, it's mobile and with cloud and business analytics, it's the right time and it's the right place to be able to take a look at your organization in a way that you've never seen it before. This next slide shows you just a real quick brief overview of some of the graphs and charts that might be available to you for a fictitious uh, organization, showing you that you could be able to visually look real quickly at a gross margin percentage, the average revenue per full-time uh, employee, Again, you get to see net sales by territory, accounts receivable and aging, and accounts payable aging. This opportunity gives you real meaningful data and an insight to you what's happening within your organization at a client level that actually allows you to click on that and deliver actionable results. Partner with Socius Cloud Dashboard to view your critical data in new ways with Socius Cloud. That takes us to the final slide within our presentation on a call to action asking you to consider the cloud and in particular Socius Cloud. These next steps we feel are critical to helping your organization grow and scale and be even more successful than I'm sure it already is. Please remember that the cloud is more important now than ever for your business. It's also important to involve Socius early in your cloud strategy. Call upon the resources that we have here that are available to you to help you develop a path for your migration to the cloud. Contact us today to find out the best cloud deployment strategy for your organization. We have FAQs that are available online. We also have our cloud costing calculator, which is available online to actually allow you to implement and plug in certain variables to get a real-time estimate, a comparison of on-premise against a cloud opportunity in a cloud environment. And then also complete our online cloud options quiz at the website that you see there below or visit our website directly. And you can also request a cloud impact assessment as well. Again, we thank you for the opportunity to present to you today and we hope that the information we provided was beneficial for you and we ask that you consider the cloud and in particular, Socius Cloud. Thanks, Bert and Daryl. For more information on Socius Cloud Services, visit SociusOne.com, click the Services drop-down tab, and choose Cloud Technology. Here you'll find information on Cloud ERP, Cloud CRM, and Cloud Collaboration. Also, feel free to reach out to Bert and Daryl directly. Um, their contact information, it's bburi, B-U-R-I, at SociusOne.com, and D for Daryl, mall, M-O-L-L, at SociusOne.com. We appreciate you taking the time to join us today and learn more about Socius Cloud Services.